Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Quran Weekly. Today, inshallah, for stories of the prophets, we'll be talking about the Prophet Dawood and Sulaiman alayhim as salam. Two for one, inshallah. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about many different prophets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about some prophets where there is a father-son relationship, brother-brother relationship. So there are even some very interesting dynamics and relationships between some of the prophets that are taught to us in the Quran. One of these pairs of prophets that is spoken about in the Quran at multiple places is the prophet Dawood who is the father, and his son Sulaiman alayhim as -salam, David and Solomon, Dawood and Sulaiman alayhim as -salam. One of the very fascinating, for me personally, one of the very fascinating stories about this father-son duo that is mentioned in the Quran is in Surah number 21, Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 78 and 79. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa wa Sulaymana, إِذْ يَحْكُمَانِ فِي الْحَرْثِ إِذْ نَفَشَتْ فِيهِ غَنَمُ الْقَوْمِ وَكُنَّا لِحُكْمِهِمْ شَاهِدِينَ so here's the backdrop of the story. Somebody come, there are two individuals. One of them has a farm. The other one, he has like a herd, a flock of goats and sheep, animal, livestock. What ends up happening is during the nighttime, maybe, you know, the gate gets left open or they knock part of the fence down, but the livestock, the animal, spills out onto the farmland of the neighbor and they end up eating and tearing through all of his crop. And when they wake up in the morning, they find they've ruined all of his crop, his harvest, all of his, you know, his, uh, his farm has been ruined and the animals are all over the place. So they go to Dawood alayhi salam, who is the king, the father, prophet of Allah, to settle the matter. He hears their case out and he basically says, well, let's estimate the value of the animals versus the crops that were damaged. And what they end up finding out is that the animals are worth pretty close to, you know, what the crop would have been worth if it hadn't been destroyed. So he basically says, you know, gentleman B, who owns these animals, in retribution for your animals damaging the harvest, the crop of your neighbor, the farmer, he will basically be given your animals. You will transfer the ownership of the animals over. Case settled. Thank you very much. That's it. As they're leaving the courthouse, and the narration mentions that, you know, obviously the, the farmer is at least grateful that a decision's been made, but he doesn't really know what to do with these animals. And then the, the man, the shepherd, who has to give all his animals up, is very distraught. Like, this is everything. This is everything I own. Sulaiman alayhi salam, a young man, the son, a prophet of Allah, is sitting at the back of the court and he says, Father, if I may, offer a suggestion. He says, absolutely, what do you have to offer? Sulaiman alayhi salam says, a farmer doesn't know anything about raising animals, shepherding animals. While the shepherd here in this situation will be left with nothing, probably fall into poverty, will develop a lot of ill feelings in regards to that, and what's going to happen to his family, and it's going to create a lot more problems. Here's my solution. The farmer will get the animals of the shepherd, while the shepherd will have the responsibility of restoring the farm. The farmer will get the animals of the shepherd while the shepherd has to restore the farm. And this arrangement, it will last as long as the shepherd takes to fix and restore the farm. The sooner he restores it, the sooner the farmer gets his farm back in good condition, the sooner the shepherd gets his animals back. The longer he takes, the longer he doesn't have his animals. When Dawood salam hears this suggestion, he says, that's an amazing suggestion. That's a remarkable suggestion. وَكُنَّا لِحُكْمِهِمْ شَاهِدِينَ فَفَهَمْنَهَا Sulaiman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we gave Sulaiman the proper understanding. So going back to the previous verse, وَدَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ إِذْ يَحْكُمَانِ فِي الْحَرْضِ When Dawood and Sulaiman alayhi salam were making the decision in regards to the crop, the harvest that had been ruined, when the livestock had gone in there and ran it over. And Allah said, we were witnessing this whole situation. Allah says, we gave Sulaiman the proper understanding of this situation. But both Dawood and Sulaiman were both given knowledge and wisdom. 
وكلنا اتينا حكما وعلما وسخرنا مع داوود الجبال يسبحنا والطير وكنا فاعلين ان الله سبحانه وتعالى goes on praising داوود عليه السلام but nevertheless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we gave Suleiman the proper understanding. He made the proper decision. So now this is a story about two prophets, father and son, Dawood and Suleiman alayhi salam. Why did I choose to talk about this story and why am I fascinated by this mention of these two amazing f- prophets, father and son? It's because I think there are so many lessons that we can take from here, as is the objective of us learning about all these prophets. What are some of the lessons here? You have an older person. Right, a community leader. A lot of experience, a lot of wisdom. But his experience, his wisdom, and his authority does not prevent him from being open to suggestions from people younger than him. Forget about taking a suggestion from somebody younger than you. Those of you who are parents, you know, taking a suggestion from your own child requires a great amount of humility. I can tell you I'm a father. So if my daughter came and tried to correct me, I'd be like, I was changing your diapers. Right? I have changed your diapers, like official rule. If you have ever changed somebody's diapers, they will never know anything that you don't know. This is like a very unfortunate human reaction. But Dawood alayhi salam, a great prophet of Allah shows us that somebody older, wiser, knowledgeable, experienced, authoritative, should never close themselves off, should never deprive themselves of newer, fresher ideas from other people, younger people. A father who is a prophet of Allah is so open to the suggestion of his son. So that's the first lesson we learn here. Number two, a lot of times we have young people who got great, fresh, new ideas of doing some stuff in the community or whatever the setting may be. We see Sulaiman alayhi salam, he doesn't go in there and say, you're wrong, this makes no sense, this is dumb. He doesn't behave that way. He's got manners, he's got etiquette, and he is extremely respectful. If young people want their suggestions to be heard, they want their ideas to be taken seriously, they have to carry themselves accordingly. You can't be behaving like a child and be immature and be rude and obnoxious, but then when you want to share an opinion, then you want everyone to take you seriously. You have to act in accordance with what you're trying to communicate. So it's just such a profound lesson about family relationships, the dynamics within the home between parents and children, and just in general across the board, in communities, how the youth are meant to deal with the older generation and vice versa, how the older generation should be embracing and accommodating the youth. So I just find a really beautiful example of this in this story. And I hope and pray everyone, inshallah, is benefiting from the stories of the Prophet series. Inshallah, make sure to share this video and the rest of the series with family and friends. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to practice everything that was said and heard. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much for watching Quran Weekly. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.